We've come back to Knotts now to visit the fantastic lofts of Tom at Goldrick. Thanks very much for having me around today, Tom. I must say you've got a magnificent setup here, it's a credit to you. You're welcome, Keith. What system do you race? We fly, fly uh, natural system. Oh, that's, that makes a change. Most of the flies up here race Widowood, don't they? Well, they do, but uh, I've got the time to fly natural system. I'm retired now, so I'm a 24 hour a day pigeon man now. Oh, good luck to you. Um, how long have you been in the sport? Well, I'm 67 now and I started as a racing member at 14 years of age during the war when we used to fly the old Penzance route. We used to feed on the old NPS mixture. Yeah, well, and what's one or two of your best positions? Well, I think one of our best performances, Must Rank, is probably one of the best in Yorkshire, but I doubt if it'll ever be beaten. We sent uh, 11 birds to Falaise in 1978, and uh, roughly 14,000 pigeons were liberated, and we were first, second, third, fifth, and seventh. Brilliant performance, Tom. That's absolutely magnificent. We uh, actually, it was my son Tim who built this loft over on me right here. He, I was a professional ground trainer at the time and uh, he decided to get some pigeons and find it. A, I said, well, it's a great hobby, providing you've got the time. Anyway, cut a long story short, Keith, the dogs went and I became a pigeon man again. And we've been back two years and in that time I think we've won 85% of the races that we've entered. Right Keith, this is Timmy's boy. This is a Lefabre Dane and bred by your good friend Albert Taylor. He's won two or three races club racing and last year we sent him to Nantes in the National Flying Club and he was second section K, uh, 64th open over 12,000 birds. And that's on the natural? On the natural and he's a Lefabre Dane and flying 428 miles. These are a few year old birds in Tom, how many old birds you keep? Uh, roughly about 140. These are all, all but three are yearlings. Just had two races as young birds last year and uh, then we stopped them. And uh, hopefully we'll see what they're made of this year. How far did you send your old birds? Uh, old birds? Yeah. Well, up as far as uh, Nance 428. Yeah. That pie then in front here there. She's had three channel races. She won Retford Two Bird Championship first time over from Rennes as a yearling by 20 minutes. And then this year she was first section, uh, 13th Open, uh, Northern Classic. And then we sent her back to New York when really she were over the top. And uh, there were only 14 or 15 birds on the day and we timed in at 20 past four next morning in the landing here. She'd obviously come late at night. And uh, she was 23rd Open, third mm. section. What's her best nest condition then? Well, she wants to sit in about 12 days. Yeah. What family is she then? She's Tom? a daughter of Albert's King's Cup winner from Larry. Well, he's Redcock. Yeah. yeah. He's got some good pigeons at Albert Taylor. Ah. <laughs> Not, <Is> that... <laughs> he's a nice chap to the boot, mate. Yeah, he has. He's got some good pigeons and we, we, we've we swapped pigeons. I think Albert's best youngster and his best yearling this year were from here. When did you pair your birds up in, Tom? Well this year we paired up a bit later Keith because last year we made the mistake of pairing all our pigeons up at the same time and you know as I pointed out to you about the pied end we sent her to New York but she'd four flights out and really a pigeon at that stage has gone over the top. Yeah. So this year we paired our stock birds up I think the third week in uh, January and we paired the racers up uh, the last week in February. Yeah, I, say, I must say mate it's very re refreshing to come to a natural loft because well, it seems everybody's on Widower these days. Well I think myself that that Widowood, the Widowood system lends itself to lads that's working or a push for time, it's a, it's a set system and I mean the thing is that as I say I've had 50, nearly 60 years of pigeon flying and the natural system it doesn't lend its end to the availability of pigeons like the Widowood, the Widowers are there every week if they want them yeah. but your naturals we have to put these pigeons down specifically for one possibly two races a year Yeah. you know and, and that's a lot yeah. you know the, we, as you've seen here we, we're divided into four racing lofts and each loft is, is mapped out for a certain distance and for certain races and if everything goes right, away they go. How know? about feeding Tom, what do you feed? Well, what we do with natural pigeons, we, while they're feeding youngsters, as you've seen, the hoppers are in. Yeah. But once the youngsters are all away, which hopefully this next week will see them all out, um, we like feed in the morning and then we put the hoppers in at night and then they're taken out. The moment that they start going up to perch and go for a drink, 
they're taken out. How about training the old birds? Oh, we, we, we hammer these pigeons. Yeah. They, they, they've got to have it, you know. I mean, if, uh, if I say that these pigeons will have four tosses a week at least of 30, 35 miles, and then the channel pigeons, my son, we will basket overnight in the stables, the drinkers on, and he'll be off at three o'clock in the morning down to Salisbury singling up. Yeah. Oxford's a favourite toss for us. It's a long way, mate, isn't it? Yeah, but then again, I mean, the point is that over the years, Keith, you know yourself as an old pigeon flyer, that you, there's times when you're flying the channel and there's two pigeons come, one for you, yours goes in and the other one goes on the house, so one knows where it lives and the other one's been conditioned right, everything's been done, but it didn't know where it was going. This is inside the stock lofts, Tom, and I say they lovely the stock birds, mate, they plenty of room and plenty of fresh air in here, but nice aviary outside. What families do you keep? Well, we, we introduced the Bessons two years ago, we bought their top racing pigeons and obviously sons and daughters of Bishop's Pride, Showman and uh, all the rest of them. We've got Ronnie Miller's pigeons here, we've got Direct Van Wildermish and we've up there, there the pair of Directly Fabridanas from Albert Taylor and Dennis. Um, we've got uh, another daughter in here of his King's Cup winner. Um, when did you pay the stock birds up in Tom? We paid these up the third, like, third week in January. Right, the first lot, loft we're looking at, Keith, was built by my son Tim. He got his own ideas about a loft and he wanted extra deep, plenty of ventilation, yeah. big open fronts. Yeah. And, did, you, uh, did you trap into a corridor in that one? Yeah, we trapped straight through the corridor, open doors. Um, the, the, the two partitions either side, we just close them up on race day so they're into a confined space. Yeah. We built that aviary on the side for the stock birds, you know, made it plenty roomy and uh, put drainage in it and everything so that it can be washed down and drained. And the other racing lofts and stock lofts and young bird lofts over there, that was designed and built by Derek Mitchum. Yeah, magnificent setup, Tom, really is fantastic. The lawns, lovely big open spaces for the pigeons, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's ideal and I mean, these pigeons can be out at break of dawn in the morning and, uh, you know, they've got... It, they do what they want all day, other than you know the fact that they go race here, they go training four or five times a week. Yeah, so you have an open off most of the day, do you? Well, yeah, yeah. And yet we never have a pigeon touch wood, we never have a pigeon to go to fields. Right Keith, this is the red cock that topped the fed from Falaise last year, Doncaster fed. We were first, second and third and he topped the fed and was fifth a mile, South Yorkshire a mile, 9,102 birds. He's, he's a son of the tame red of Albert Taylor, the King's Cup winner from Lerick. These are a few yay babies in Tom. How many babies you breed each year? Well, we'll breed nearly a hundred. But, uh, you know, we're, we let the fuel go. Um, we'll wind up probably with a racing team to start with, probably about 70. Yeah, how far do you race your babies? Well, I'm not a big believer, Keith. You know, in, in the in the A-day, like it, in the 70s, uh, I wouldn't fly youngsters. Uh, I'd train them, and if they were a drop bike race after the programme had been completed, I would send them to that. But these will get plenty of training, plenty of singling up, but this year we are going to go through the program because they're all national and Midlands national run youngsters, so you know they'll have to go through the program these. But I'm not a great, you know, I'm not a great lover of young bird racing. It's a nice check of cock Tom. What's this one? He's a bush art, Keith, and I bought him from my good friend Charlie Truman's clearance sale. He was his number one racer, they called him Champion Podge. He top Derbyshire fed from Nantes, about two and a half thousand birds, and then a few weeks later he went to Chris Catterall Nantes race, first East Pennine section, third open, 13,007 birds. Thanks very much for having me around, Tom. It's been a great pleasure. I say it's been very, very refreshing to come to a natural flyer. Well, it's been a pleasure having you, Keith, and as I say, I mean, uh, it's totally my life now. I've given up everything else that I used to do, and I'm a 24-hour-a-day pigeon man now, so they ought to be doing it, and they ought to be looking well. Thanks a lot, mate.